The 1997-98 domestic season brought a string of successes for the Air Scottish Eagles with every trophy on offer picked up by the Centrum side. The trophy cabinet full of silverware was rewarding itself, but the bonus was the chance to compete at a new, higher level. As Britain's top side, Eagles received an invite to compete in the Skoda Autos European Hockey League and a chance to rub shoulders with the elite sides from Europe's strongest hockey nations. Kemal Petrol Litvinov of the Czech Republic, AK Barskazan of Russia and the Adler Mannheim of Germany came out of the hat as Eagles Division F opponents. On paper, a very tough prospect indeed. Two teams would go through to the playoff round after the six-game schedule. The opening match of the campaign was a step into the unknown for Eagles. Every opponent in the group came from a league previously recognised as being of a higher standard than Super League. But the airside were keen to prove that they could live with this level of competition and they were keen to show as well that they were in no mood to be pushed around. After a fiery opening, that goal opened the scoring for the visitors. Mannheim taking the lead in the 19th minute through Mike Stevens, assisted by Gordon Hines. And Eagles trailed 1-0 at the first interval. You can see here, Riando gets a piece of the puck, but it bounces over his shoulder and drops into the net. Into the second period action, and again, Eagles pin back in their own defensive zone. Mannheim on the attack here and Eagles fail to take the opportunity to clear their zone after winning the face-off and are punished by the visitors. Philip Boson on target there, not needing two touches at that one. The puck pulled out front by Jason Young after being won by Christian Puget and Boson grateful to slap that one past Riendo and put the German side into a 2-0 lead. You can see again the defence had their chance to clear the zone but punished severely by an alert German side. A familiar face in goal for the Mannheim side in this match with ex-Eagles goaltender Sven Ramf taking his place between the pipes. Ramf, a favourite with the air side in their inaugural Super League season. During his time with Air Ramp was always noted for his brilliant saves, but he was always liable to give up the odd soft goal, and it was that quality which again came to the fore here in this match and was instrumental in Eagles clawing their way back into this game. Eagles in a short-handed play here. Watch Ramp tries to make a smart pass from his own crease, intercepted by Carry Biet. Biet takes the shot, places it inside the far post and Eagles are back within striking distance at two goals to one. 36 minutes played, Biet brings his side back within one goal of Mannheim. Lovely move by the air forward. Watch him here, fakes the shot, takes another step and the unsettled ramp has no chance as the puck is placed inside his right hand post. Less than 90 seconds later, Eagles would draw level. Just wide on that occasion, but Eagles keep the pressure on in the Mannheim zone. Watch David Saint-Pierre here, comes out of the corner with the puck. He'll play a big part in this goal. Mannheim really struggling to clear their zone on this occasion. Eagles fighting hard to keep the pressure on.
Saint-Pierre collects again in his own zone and carries forward down the right wing to Montanari shot goes in Ram thinks he has it but Mark Wolves alert tucks the puck home to draw Eagles level 38 minutes and 28 seconds gone and Eagles right back in this game watch the shot here Ramp gets the blocker to it thinks he's got a grip of the puck but it's sitting right on the crease Mark Wolf sneaks in there to knock it home and bring Eagles level Mannheim were to bounce back quickly though and before the second break would regain the lead Eagles defence backing off there to give Stefan Rachel the chance for the shot at Vincent Riendo. Jackson Penny credited with the assist and Mannheim take a 3-2 lead to the dressing room at the second break. Too much time for the German forward there. Eagles punished and the Mannheim side come out for the third period leading by three goals to two. Mannheim may have been ahead at that break but you can see by the faces that they know they're in a game now and the fans know that they've got a special occasion to watch here as well. They're loving every moment as Eagles compete well in this opening EHL match. Vincent Riendo with a big double save there to keep his side in touch. The Eagles equaliser was not far away. That Mannheim move well broken up by Eagles as Mark Montanari takes the puck for a walk down the right side. Sam Gallo with some heavy forechecking there to keep the puck in the zone. Trevor Burgess working hard as well. And his presence in the attacking zone would prove crucial in a few seconds time. Wolf holding it up against the barrier. German caught in possession, it's pulled out front. And who's waiting there but Burgess to tuck it low under Sven Lamb and bring Eagles back level at three goals apiece. Montanari and Grillo with the assists on the goal. Great work by Eagles, cycling hard in the Mannheim zone. Burgess in the right place at the right time and slots it just inside the post to bring Eagles level and give them a great chance to go on and take something from this debut game in the European Hockey League look at the space for Burgess there by the time the German defence realise he's on the spot it's too late and he goes back to the bench for a well deserved drink satisfied at having brought his side back into the game it was to be a disappointing end for Eagles however as the Germans punish some late slackness in the rear guard to ultimately take the points. Frantic defence by the Germans on that occasion, but they break quickly up the ice. And Gord Hines really punishes the defence there slapping that one into the top corner past Vincent Riendo assists to Bozon and Risha and Mannheim into a 4-3 lead
Eagles still reeling from that one and at 55-11 the Germans would go further ahead a turn and shot there by Dave Tomlinson Brian Tutt with the assist on the goal Eagles now staring defeat in the face five goals to three down and time rapidly running out Composure of the Germans showed through in the closing stages. They really gave Air no chance to get back into the match. And they put a false look on the scoreline in the closing moments. Eagles had battled so well throughout the match, they really did not deserve to have a 6 3 scoreline flashed around Europe as their debut score in this competition. But at 57 53, Alexander Serikov made it just that, picking up on that defensive error by Alan Schuller to drive it into the roof of the net unjust punishment perhaps for Eagles as the Germans go on to claim the points again an error causing the goal no chance there for Vincent Riendo So in the end, defeat for Eagles, but the game had given the team further belief that they could make an impression on the EHL, as the game had been well within their reach, right up until the closing minutes. Um, ultimately disappointing result but you must have been pleased the way your team competed for most of the game yeah it's uh, it's the classic uh, 60 minute game we played 55 minutes of it but uh, yeah I was uh, you know the first period was always going to be interesting for us to see how the, the two teams matched up and I think it gave us a lot of confidence coming out of the game like that and you know, to, to come back a couple of times and tie it up especially late in the game like that I thought we were uh, you know we were in control a little bit I, there were great lengths of the game I thought we overpowered them down deep in their zone and around the net um, but they're an experienced team and we made three bad individual errors in the last five minutes and it cost us three goals and it's you know it's put us behind the eight ball already we had a really good year last year and we're looking to build on that and and uh, I think the European Cup's a good uh, a good opportunity for the guys to to come forth and and try and, and do something more you know and and I don't think anybody has any doubts when we started this that we wanted to get to the next round. You know, that was our goal from the start, get to the next round and see where it goes. And, and uh, you know, we had a setback last Tuesday. We played well. We thought we played well. Uh, we controlled most of the game. Um, you just can't make those mistakes. Uh, we know that now. We're stronger for it as a team. And then hopefully Tuesday night we can, we can prove we belong where we are. I think we're looking at uh, a must-win situation on Tuesday night against Litvinov. I mean... Uh, we expected or we wanted to win all our home games. We didn't win the first, and I think our backs are against the wall, and it's a must-win situation. A must-win situation, says Jeff Hode, as the arena is dressed up for another European night. Before the game, the Air fans are treated to the sight of NHL legend Jean Beliveau, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame and one of the most prolific point scorers in NHL history as he performed the puck drop before the match against Czech side Kemo Petrol Litvinov. Basilio given his first European Hockey League start of the campaign and it was to be a successful night for Sean and his Air teammates.
Eagles would give up the first goal, however, Litvinov opening the scoring. Pressure in the Eagles zone by the fast skating Czech side, broken up on that occasion. But this time, Jindrich Kotria finding the space down the left wing, cutting inside and backhanding a shot high over Sean Basilio. No chance for the air goaltender on that one, assisted by Robert Gisela and the Litvin offside into a 1-0 lead. They wouldn't enjoy the luxury of that lead for long, however, just two minutes and 23 seconds later, Eagles would draw level. Good pressure in the zone, it's pulled back to Alan Schuller, and his shot from the blue line touched under the goaltender by Jamie Steer. Eagles level at one goal apiece. Watch it again, John Parko finds Schuller with the pass. A busy goal area, and Jamie Steer with the slightest touch to deflect it under goaltender Pink to bring Eagles level at one goal each. Before the break, Eagles would go ahead. Again, good pressure in the Litvinov zone from the home side. Watch John Parko here. He's looking for the pass and it's offered to him by Sean Byram. And the big man with a classic finish there, using his fast hands and long reach to good effect, taking the puck round the goaltender and into the net. Eagles 2-1 ahead. Well worked goal. Watch Byram moving into the space at the side of the post, picked out well by Parco, and no mistake from Byram. Eagles 2 1 ahead at the first interval. Into the second period, Litvinov wasted no time in drawing level. Inside the first minute of play, they made it two goals apiece. Again, good skating by the visitors. Puck pulled back here to the blue line. Faking the shot, opens up the space for Sergei Butko, and he makes no mistake drilling it past Basilio, assisted by Prorok and Straka, and this game tied up once again. Watch it once more, the fake on the shot there opens things up nicely for Butko, and when his shot from the blue line comes through, a mass of players in front of Basilio, it finds the back of the net and these sides level once again. What a way for Eagles to take the lead. Mark Wool striding forward there to fire an unstoppable shot into the top corner of Pink's net. Unassisted goal by Wolfie. And Eagles into a 3-2 lead with less than 23 minutes played. Unstoppable shot there, high into the roof of the net. Goaltender no chance. And Eagles once more in front.
Litvinov pressing hard there but it would be Eagles who would score next Mark Montanari this time making it 4-2 for Eagles Sandra Lowe with the work down the left wing The fans loved that one. Watch it again here. Sam Gallo takes it to the outside of the defenseman on the backhand. Pulls it out front. Really no way Montanari was going to miss that one. And Eagles 4-2 up. Great end-to-end -end hockey game though here. And at 35-22, Litvinov would pull a goal back. Again pressing hard in the Eagles zone. Looking for the scoring chance. And eventually it's Victor Hubel who tucks it past Basilio to make it Eagles 4, Litvinov 3. Watch again, patient build-up by the visitors. Piros takes the shot, back off the post, and Hubel rounds Basilio to bring his side back within one goal. Into the third period, Eagles ahead by four goals to three. Home side pressing for more goals in the closing stages. Some desperate defending and fine goaltending required in the closing moments. But there were to be no more goals. 4-3 the final scoreline and Eagles secure their first points in the European Hockey League. The promise shown in the opening match is fulfilled as Air achieve a result which would serve warning that they intended to be serious contenders in the competition. Flying the flag for Scotland with pride and already turning their thoughts to the next match, the first road trip of the competition and a grueling journey into the heart of Russia to face AK Bars Kazan. First points are in the bag, you're now in with a realistic chance? Well, we're in a chance, obviously we got some tough road games, but you know, there's mathematically, yes, we're in with a chance. You know, Litvinov has lost a couple of games and the Germans still got a point tonight, I believe, losing uh, to Kazan. But so yeah, it's, it's open point-wise, but we're going to have to come up with a really big result on the road the next game in Russia is going to be a big one? That's going to be a very big game. Uh, I think they're a really strong team and uh, hopefully we can go up there and play the same as we did tonight and uh, come out of there with a couple points. Yeah, it's going to be uh, quite an experience for all of us uh, to go to Russia. We're leaving uh, early, we're leaving on Saturday <coughs> for the trip. And uh, well, we're hoping to do well, obviously. I think we played pretty good in the first two games that we played in the European League. Um, so we're looking forward to it and uh, hopefully come up with a positive result. Uh, again, you know, it's not going to be easy, but uh, I think uh, it's, it's quite possible. I don't think too many of the guys have ever been to Russia before, so uh, it'll be uh, quite an experience. You know, we're not allowed to do much, but uh, other than that, it'll be fun. Twenty-six hours after leaving Centrum, the Eagle squad arrived at their destination in Russia for a match that the hockey world gave them little chance of winning. But by the end of the night, the Air Scottish Eagles would be talked about all over Europe. It wasn't the best of starts, however. At 2.17, Kazan took the lead. Alexander Trofimov with the goal, assisted by Kudachov. 
and Eagles find themselves 1-0 down early on. Too much time given to the Russian forwards. They're able to play some tight passes close in, and Trofimov makes no mistake tucking it past Riendo as Kazan won Eagles nil. Before the end of the period, however, Eagles would serve warning to their Russian hosts. Only 36 seconds left in the period when Jeff Hoad rattles that one past the goaltender, assisted by Dino Bauba after Angelo Catanaro played it out from defence. One goal apiece. Hoad, the man who always comes up with the big goals for Eagles, comes up with one again. Trefilov pulled to the near post. Hody tucks it in at the far post and Eagles are level at the first interval. The Russians regrouped, however, and early in the second they went ahead again. Alexei Chupin picking out the top corner there. Wrist shot high to Riendo's glove side, assisted by Iakubov and Davidov. Kazan 2-1 ahead. Classy goal from the Russian as the pass picks him out. Quick swivel and a snap of the wrist. It's in under the crossbar and Eagles find themselves one goal behind. Again, however, Eagles' determination would leave the home side with something to think about as they went to the dressing room at the next break. Sam Grillo pouncing on a defensive error there, making no mistake as he advanced in the goaltender. Slight deflection off Trefilov's pad, but it's in the back of the net. 45 seconds left in the second period, Eagles level at two goals apiece. Much too casual there by Sergei Gunko. Grillo advances and Eagles back level against the Russian champions. Into the third period and Eagles would shock their hosts early on. 42-15 played when Jeff Hood tucks his second goal of the night past goaltender Trefilov. Assisted by Ryan Kumu and Sam Grillo. Great work by Eagles down the right side through Hoad himself. And when the move appeared to break down, he was alert to the loose puck out front. Watch him here cut across goal. As the initial shot is poked away by the goaltender, Hoad's on the spot, tucks it home. And Eagles 3-2 ahead early in the third period. And if that was a shot for the Russians, Wass was to follow at 48-42. Watch here, Wolf's shot goes just wide, but he swivels and stays in the slot. Montanari picks him out, and that blast from Wolf finds his way into the net. Eagles 4-2 ahead, and the crowd in the Russian city of Kazan silenced by the British champions. Montanari picks out his man perfectly and before the goaltender can set himself the puck's behind him in the net and Eagles are 4-2 up. In the closing moments, the dancing girls still smiling, but very much in the minority, as Eagles silence the home crowd with a stunning victory. Vincent Riendo leads the celebrations on a night that will be talked about by air fans for many years to come, the night Eagles beat the Russians in Kazan. Undoubtedly the biggest result in the club's history, the home side devastated and the air players reveling in a very special moment. Kazan came to Centrum with Russia watching live on national television, but Eagles were determined to make it a famous double.
The big Centrum crowd eager to see if their favourites could repeat history and see off the Russian challenge and it would be a night to remember for the Scots fans. Referee Wolfgang Helwig from Germany gets this match underway here in Centrum and straight away it's Eagles coming forward through Mark Wolf hits the foot of the post, almost a dream start for Eagles inside the first 30 seconds there, Mark Wolf hitting the post with the goaltender beaten but it's Kazan responding straight away, they're attacking down the left that's Ilnor Gezatun on the puck but it's picked up behind the net Still the visitors in possession, it's behind the Eagles goal, Antonenka battling for it there, Vince Bo holds him up on the boards and Sam Grillo now has a chance to bring it clear for Eagles, Grillo switches it to Mark Wolf. Wolf back to Grillo, nice move by Eagles, Grillo makes some progress down this right side, stops at his track, sends a Kazan defenseman spinning, Montanari now, Montanari to Wolf, only can get half contact in that shot, Grillo now digs it out front, Scott Young with a chance, oh what a brilliant save there, Oleg Gratev diving to glove that effort from Scott Young, the best move of the game for some time by Eagles. John Byram now going in for the face-off for Eagles. Scott Young picks that one out of there, drops it to his stick. Tries to find the pass, it's out front! John Parko opens the scoring for the Air Scottish Eagles! Great play by the home side! Scott Young picked it up at the point, took it into the corner, pulled it back, and there was John Parko for Eagles! Touching that one home, the crowd on their feet here, loving that one. It's Eagles ahead, one goal to nil, 14 minutes and 30 seconds gone, surviving a string of power plays to the Russians to come forward and take the lead. Schiller brings it through, across the blue line, drops it inside to Mark Montanari. Montanari drops it to Hoffman, Hoffman to Wolf. Wolf's the man in the Eagles side with the big shot. Alex to play it to Grillo, Wolf again, back to Grillo. Grillo fails to find his pass, Wolf to Schuller. Deflected away from Montanari but he picks it up again, Schuller again. To Wolf, to Schuller. Schuller with the shot, it's there! Eagles! Second goal, slap shot from Alan Schuller. From the blue line, high into the net, past Oleg Gratev, who I suspect was unsighted on that one. The fans on their feet again. It's Eagles 2, the Russian champions AK Bals Kazan nil. Here's a tune coming away here. Saint Pierre gets the touch. Plays that one out. Balvin across to the far side. Five seconds left on the penalty. Good kill by Eagles. With the Russians still in possession. The ender makes a stop. But the rebound with the air goaltender off balance and two Russian forwards in front of his goal. No chance there and the Russians pull one back. That goal timed 25 minutes and 20 seconds. Trevor Burgess now on the right side, plays it forward to Mark Wolf. Wolf into the corner, it's picked up by Gratha.
Kazan coming through the Eagles defence there. No penalty call there, despite the look to the referee from number 30, Ilnur Grisatun, who was looking for something there on the challenge from Trevor Burgess. Sandra Lowe now, good play by the Little Eagles forward. Finds Montanari, and that's the goal Eagles have been looking for. Mark Montanari for Eagles. Great work by Sandra Lowe in the build-up. Eagles, French-Canadian forward, picks out the Italian-Canadian forward. And the lethal Mark Montanari finds the corner of the goal. Eagles, 3-1 ahead here against AK Vazkazan. Four minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. And this crowd here in the Centre Marina on their feet as they sense another famous victory against the champions of Russia, Scotland's only Super League team against the champions of one of the world's great ice hockey forces, Eagles on the brink of victory. Kazan come forward, but we're in the last 10 seconds. Vincent Riendo saves again. Alan Schiller, who's done so well, clears his zone. But that's it, it's all over. Eagles take the three points with a 3-1 victory here in Centrum. John Parker opened it in the first period for Eagles. Alan Schiller made it 2-0 early in the second. Kazan pulled one back through Zolotov in the 26th minute, but Mark Montanari, with less than five minutes left, made the final scoreline here in Centrum. Air Scottish Eagles 3, AK Bas Kazan 1. It was not only a great Centrum occasion enjoyed by an excited air crowd, but it put Eagles firmly in with a serious chance of progressing to the next stage. Jim, when the schedule came out, the two games against Kazan looked like the toughest ones. You've just played those, and now you're top of the league. Well, I, th I think we we learned a lot from the the first game against Mannheim, and then uh, getting a result against Litvinov gave us some confidence, even in losing the first game, that you know that we could compete. But uh, obviously, we're in a you know a stronger skill team going against Kazan, and uh, you know the result over there just there was a lot of things happened in our favor, and you know we were well outshot, but it just fell for us and. Uh, but it's, it, I think it was a confidence factor really that supported us tonight. They never got ahead tonight, so it didn't follow the pattern in that way. But they came at you for long periods of the game, put you under a lot of pressure. And the defence well, yeah. stood up well. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're you know they're they're a highly skilled team and a very strong skating team, well organised team, and they had an exceptional amount of power plays tonight as well, which is you know not unusual. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, again our. Our defence came up big, but especially you know Vincent Riendu had that's back-to-back -back games against him where he's been outstanding, and you know there's no kidding ourselves. He was a major factor in it. The home games are behind you now. It's two games on the road that can seal your place in the next round. Well, there's still a lot mathematically to go for. You know, we I, I believe Kazan has to go to Mannheim next, and obviously that result you know could work in our favour if if the Germans are are uh, successful there. But uh, both games being played at the same time, we you know we have to go to Litvinov and we have to get a result. So it was next stop, the Czech Republic for Eagles, and they've been into the match against Kemal Petrol Litvinov, enjoying a one-point lead at the top of the Division F table, and knowing that a victory in regulation time would guarantee progress to the playoff round. Jim Lynch's side were keen to book their passage with a result here, and after the double victories against the Russians, confidence was high in the Scots camp. Jamie Steer was the only absentee through injury, but Eagles were able to call in the services of guest player Jason Haywood, then of the Paisley Pirates for this one. And it was the best possible start for Eagles, 7.56 on the clock when they took the lead against the Czech side. Carrie Biet picking up the puck here from Jeff Hode, making progress into the Litvinov zone and a nice finish from Biet put the Eagles side 1-0 ahead.
Litvinov would draw level, however, at 12-10. Peter Kratke scoring there, assisted by Kotria and Prorok. The camcorder footage shows him finishing from close in here. Riendo, little chance with that one. Less than two minutes later, the home side went into the lead. Robert Casella with the finish that time, assisted by Herbeck and Petrovka. The air defence caught out of position. Casella able to tuck it on the backhand past Riendo. 2-1 Kemo Petrol at the first interval. Eagles worked hard, however, to get themselves back level in this game. Scott Young all over the check zone here, eventually picking it up on the far side after skating round the back of the goal. Assists to Catanaro and San Pierre. Lovely finish in at the post by Scott Young. Watch him cut across the defenseman here. The wrist shot past the unsighted goaltender. Eagles level at two goals apiece. before the next interval Jim Lynch's side would take the lead the goal comes from guest player Haywood nice finish there assists to Caribiet and Jeff Hode Haywood brings the puck onto the backhand for the low finish under Marek Pink and Eagles lead 3-2 at the second break Into the third period action, watch Sean Byram here, he's just picked up the puck in front of his own goal. Eagles pressing hard in the zone. And they would shortly go in front. That Litvinov move broken down, it's with John Parker now, slips it to Sean Byram, and that's an unstoppable backhand shot high into the roof of the net to put Eagles into a 4-2 lead. 41-56 on the clock, Parker and St. Pierre with the assists, and Eagles with a two-goal cushion. Things look good for Eagles at that point, but Litvinov would fight back. And at 52-20, they brought themselves back to within striking distance of their visitors. Robert Casella doing the damage once again, assisted by Marian Menhart. Catches Vincent Riendu out there with the low finish. Eagles now holding on to that one goal advantage. Disaster however at 56-04 with that one. Jindrich Kotria making it four goals apiece after a slack pass across the blue line by the Eagles defence. So a regulation time draw in one point for Eagles but after a scoreless period of overtime the game still required a winner so into penalty shots with Robert Casella of the home side eventually hitting the vital strike after each team had taken six shots each. Unfortunately our Czech cameraman ran out of film and we can't bring you pictures of that dramatic shootout. Anyway, Kazan's win in Mannheim on the same night ensured this group would go to the last playing day before anyone could secure success. Empty seats in Centrum for the Super League clash against the Bracknell Bees was evidence of the fact that many of Eagles' loyal supporters were gathering in a local hotel in readiness for their departure to Mannheim. Have you got a prediction? Uh, defeat in overtime. Yeah. I'll do me. I'll say the same, defeat in overtime. I hope they win, but I think yes. as long as they get to overtime, I don't mind.
five one to eight. Hey. Hey. I'm a bit wishful thinking. No, I don't know. I, I don't like predicting because it can go either way. Well, hopefully we'll get the point. We just want the point. Right, so let's get through at least. And then we'll see where it goes from there. So it was off on the long trek to Germany and into the final group game for Eagles with the side requiring one point to guarantee progress while Mannheim required a win to go through. The atmosphere was electric in a packed ice stadium in the German city. The large army of Scots fans getting their first taste of the noise created by a DEL crowd. It may have been freezing in this rink with a roof but no walls, but it was an enthralling game that would keep both sets of fans warm as the action was non-stop. After an evenly contested opening between these two teams, it would be Eagles who would take the lead in this vital match. Indecision in the defence here allows Carrie Biet the chance to advance on goal, saved by the goaltender, but David St. Pierre following up tucks it into the net. A large band of Eagles supporters making themselves heard in the huge crowd in Mannheim. Danny Lawrence shakes his head in disbelief at that one but no doubt about it Eagles are in front watch Biet here he is the first chance put off by the despairing dive of the defenseman Lawrence gets the touch but San Pierre following up fires at home Eagles 1-0 ahead three defensemen all circling round the puck as it breaks into the Mannheim zone Biet first to react Half hits his shot, but St. Pierre makes no mistake, and Eagles 1 0 ahead. This game was a real seesaw battle, however, and at 13 41, the home side equalised. Christian looks alert there as the puck breaks off the pad of Vincent Riendo, assists going to Pavel Gross and Mike Hudson, Mannheim level at one goal apiece, much to the relief of the noisy home crowd. Good reactions by Christian looks there, no chance for Vincent Riendo. From the overhead camera you see the flick from Pavel Gross, catching Vincent Riendo out, rebound off the pad, punished by the Mannheim forward looks. One apiece at the first break then into the second period action. And again, Eagles would be first on the mark in this period. That move broken down by Mannheim. John Parko picked it up inside his own defensive zone. Only one thing on his mind there. The shot comes back off Danny Lawrence. Parko picks up his own rebound. And Eagles ahead by two goals to one. Great work by the Eagles forward. No doubt he was going to take the shot there. Lawrence couldn't cope with that one. Parko in the right place at the right time to pick up his own rebound and tuck it past the German goaltender. Mannheim killing a penalty there and within seconds they would be level. Paul Stanton with the clinical finish assisted by Heinz and Simonton Two goals apiece, no chance there for Vincent Riendo. But 
Watch this one in slow motion. You can see the quality of the finish from Paul Stanton. As the puck breaks back to him, no back left whatsoever. Just lets his own momentum carry the puck home. Mannheim back in the game. Two goals apiece to score. 31-47 on the clock. Eagles under penalty at this point as we move into the closing stages of the second period and Mannheim would make their man advantage count on the power play. That shot goes wide but watch here. The move breaks down but Mannheim comes straight back at their visitors. Jason Young scoring there, picking up the pieces close in. Assists credited to Dave Tomlinson and Jan Alston. Germans ahead for the first time in this match. Nice turn and shot there, stopped by Vincent Riendo, but Young quickest to react in the goal mouth, stabs it home on the overhead it squirms loose from Vincent Riendo Young taps it into the net Mannheim 3-2 up at the second interval Eagles mascot Ernie's too young to make this trip but look there's his mum getting herself seen on German television and there's a welcome back for Vincent Riendo who of course enjoyed a successful spell in Germany at the end of last season. Into the third period action. And again it's Eagles to hit the mark first in the period. Soaking up some pressure there from the home side but breaking up the ice quickly. Keeping the puck in the zone well and when it's pulled back there to Matt Hoffman he makes no mistake lovely shot from distance beating Danny Lawrence assisted by Jeff Hode and Eagles level at three goals apiece remember Eagles only requiring one point to guarantee progress on the night so an important goal there from Hoffman putting Eagles back in pole position squeezing it in right at the foot of the post after that lovely pass from the wing by Jeff Hode Eagles tying the game at three goals apiece Difficult for either side to pull clear of their opponents in this game though. And before long, Mannheim would score again. Vincent Riendo caught out by that one. Pavel Gross shooting as he'd stepped over the Eagles' blue line. Assist going to Mike Hudson and Mannheim 4-3 ahead. See here, Riendo is slightly unsighted by the defenseman between him and the puck. Suspicion of a slight deflection on the way through as well. Goes through the pads of the air goaltender and Mannheim ahead at four goals to three. A quick reply here though by Eagles and a classy one as well to tie the game at four goals apiece. Puck fired out there. Picked up by Dino Bauba and look at that for a shot from the blue line. The puck never rose much above the ice. Danny Lawrence absolutely no chance. And Eagles level and once again in a position to progress to the next round. 
Lawrence can't believe it. Brilliant shot by Bauba. Right on the blue line as he makes contact with that one. And how's that for accuracy? Right inside the foot of the post. From this angle, big slap from Bauba. Lawrence slides the stick across the ice but can make no contact. Eagles level at 4-4. Things looking good for Eagles at that point, and they began to look even better in the 48th minute. John Parco firing that one under Danny Lawrence after David St. Pierre's shot had been stopped by the German goaltender. Second assist on the goal to Ryan Kumu, and the fans now believing that their side are within touching distance of a place in the playoff round. Second goal of the night for John Parco. Lawrence can't cope with the high shot from Saint Pierre. Perfect timing by the Eagles forward as Parco drives that one under the despairing dive of Danny Lawrence. Eagles 5-4 ahead, 12 minutes left in the game. Eagles under penalty once again as we move into the closing stages. And Mannheim would once again make their power play count to great effect. Tomlinson had one shot blocked on the move but when he got a second bite of the cherry he made no mistake at all driving past Vincent Riendo to the far post assists on the goal going to Pellegrins and Stanton that power play goal tying the game at five goals apiece Tomlinson finding space there and the time to measure his shot no chance for Riendo Goal for Mannheim, but remember, Eagles still the team in the position to move through to the next round. With a minute and a half left, Mannheim withdrew their goaltender in favour of an extra attacker, and it was a gamble that paid handsome dividend and a sickening end for Eagles. That shot towards the empty net blocked. Watch here as Jason Young makes progress, but really going nowhere as he's ushered out towards the left wing fires a speculative shot towards goal and disaster for Eagles just 53 seconds from making history that goal ultimately would deny Eagles a place in the playoff round huge relief around the stands here in Mannheim A sickening blow for Eagles and their huge army of travelling fans. Eagles had no option but to withdraw Vincent Riendo for the closing moments of the game. But time had run out. For the Scots side, Mannheim had a chance to add another goal which really would have been no justice at all. But 6-5 the final scoreline and Mannheim along with Kazan progress to the playoff round. Jubilation for Mannheim but the air squad returned to the dressing room bitterly disappointed and almost in a state of disbelief that the adventure was over. They had seen success snatched away in the most cruel manner and in the immediate aftermath, the mood in the dressing room was one of shock and despair. 
But the team had let no one down in their first outing in the European Hockey League. They greatly enhanced the reputation of the club and British hockey on a very prominent stage. The team and the fans won many friends across Europe and in anyone's language it was a campaign which had more highs than lows and which marked another memorable chapter in the eventful history of the Air Scottish Eagles. Chiller with the shot, it's there! Eagles! Sam Grillo now, good play by the Little Eagles forward. Finds Montanari and that's the goal! Eagles have been looking for! Aber jetzt, zwei gegen einen. Wieder wird's gefährlich. Und Lorenz und Tor! John Paco! Und Tor! Unglaublich! Bauber, der Litauer und auch er trifft aus unmöglicher Position. Und Tor! Das gibt's nicht, aber jetzt muss er ihn rausnehmen.